Hi, today we're gonna explore Langchain and Llama Index, especially how to perform retrieval augmented generation with both frameworks and we cover the basics and of course then the differences of these frameworks. If you don't know what REC is, here are the basics. When you want an LLM to generate answers on data that it was not trained on, you can directly pass the data to the LLM in the prompt, but you probably don't want to pass your complete data set to the LLM since First, it's a lot of unrelated data for the answer, so-called noise. And second, many models are not able to handle this amount of data. This is the so-called context window limitation. This is why you want to store your data in a database, query the required data, and pass this small piece of data to the LLM. So this is the exact workflow. You first have multiple data sets, let's say text files, JSON files, or websites, and you load that data into memory. Then you don't put the complete data set into the vector store, but you first split the data in so-called chunks or in Llama index is called nodes, but you make smaller pieces of that very large document. Then you create embeddings. Embeddings are vector representations of your text, of the semantic meaning of the text, and then you can compare the similarity later of that vectors. And you store the vectors inside that vector store. So that's the indexation step. After the indexing step, you can make retrieval. So you've got a question and you embed that question. You now compare your question to the vectors inside the vector store and you retrieve the most similar documents from that vector store. You take that small amount of documents, pass it to a prompt and then pass the complete prompt and the documents to the LLM, which will generate a final answer from that combination. So that's the generation step in retrieval augmented generation. Okay, so this is how it works in theory. Let's now have a look at how this works with Lemma Index and Langchain in practice. Okay, I'm in VS Code and here on the left you can see we've got two files, the Langchain IPython Notebook and the Lama Index IPython Notebook. So these perform similar tasks, but yet different syntax and a little bit in the approach of course. Then we've got this data directory, which contains a text.txt file. And this is a text of a fictional restaurant where we've got this Q&A format, so what makes your pizza unique, and then you've got the answer. So this is what we want to answer with our REC system, this is the data which was not trained into the model. So before we can start, let's first install the packages. So I've created this requirements.txt file, so you can run pip install minus r requirements.txt file. This will install Langchain and also Llama index into our virtual environment. And after that, we use OpenAI. So we're gonna load our OpenAI environment variable. So you have to put it inside here, the OpenAI API key, and we will use it here in the Llama Index and Langchain, Langchain IPython notebook. Okay, so the first step is to load the data inside our memory. So we've got this approach from Langchain. So we've got a directory loader and we've got multiple other data loaders like text loaders, PDFs loaders, and so on, which are specialized to perform a loading task. And I use the directory loader, pass in the data path, and we only filter for .txt files. So this will be loaded inside memory. And after performing that, let's have a look at the documents variable. And as you can see, we've got a list, and this contains an instance of a document class, which has got this page content attribute and also if we scroll to the right, we can see that this also has got a meta day, or, or this is a very long text. I will not scroll, ah, here it is, okay. <laughs> so, sorry, uh, it has got this page content attribute and this metadata attribute. In this metadata attribute, we've got source, and this is the, the path to the, to the file where we loaded the data from. So this will automatically be stored inside this metadata object. And we can access the page content here, we access the first object of our list and access the page content attributes. So this is how you load data in Langchain. In Llama index, it works pretty similar. You've got also a directory loader where you pass in the name of the directory and directly you can pass in the load data method. So this looks pretty similar. And yeah, we also got a list with a document class, but this document class contains a little bit more information. So every document has got a special ID we don't have any embedding stored inside there. And we also got this metadata, but inside the metadata attribute, we've got the file path, the file name, file type, uh, size, creation date, last modified, and so on. So this 
per default contains a lot more information. So the drawback of this is that it makes, of course, the uh, object a little bit larger since you store more information in memory. So that's the drawback, but you get more information. Now we want to create multiple smaller documents, so-called chunks from our larger document. Let's start with the length chain. Here we've got multiple text splitters, which are in the text splitter module of length chain. And we choose the character text splitter, which we instantiate, where we pass in a chunk size, chunk overlap, and some other stuff. So let's create that. And after creating our text splitter, we use the split documents method where we pass in the list of documents, which only contains a single document. So now we've got chunks. And as you can see, again, we've got this document instance, multiple document instances now with, with page content, and also here the uh, Q&A and so on. So here we can see that uh, we've got the metadata and it is the same like before. So we've got metadata and the source to the original text file. In Llama index, it's a little bit different here you also import a text splitter, instantiate it uh, like with the same attributes like in LangChain, but then you create so-called nodes. So this is a different class than the original document class. So let's have a look at the nodes class. Again, the nodes class contains more information. So we've got two nodes here. So important here, you can see this is a different class than this class. This is a document class and this is a text node class. In LangChain, this is not the case. We've got, again, documents, but not a text node or so. So there's a different class. So we can see that this node means that it um, always contains data, which was already splitted via a text splitter. And what's very nice, as you can see, this contains a lot of information, and it also contains the relationship. I think this is a very nice information, which can be used in some advanced retrieval topics. So we've got the relationship, and here we've got the related node information. So we've got this node ID and we can see that this node ID is the same node ID like here. So we know that these nodes originally belonged together. I think that's some valuable information when you do advanced retrieval. Okay, let's go to the next step, which is indexing. So to create an index, we need an embedding function and we also need a vector database. So in our case, we will use Chroma as our vector database and OpenAI embeddings to create our embeddings from our chunks. So we use the from documents method from the Chroma class and pass in the chunks. So this is the data we want to embed and the embedding function. So this will create an index. And now we've got our vector store. We can also turn the vector store into a retriever by using the as retriever method. So this provides a standard interface for retrieving data from the vector store. So with the retriever, you don't put the data in the vector store. The, this is the vector store, which is responsible for that. To retrieve data, you use a standardized retriever. This retriever has got a method called get relevant documents. And here you pass in your question. This will be embedded. And then you make a code sign similarity search against the other documents inside the vector store. And per default, you get the four most relevant documents back from the vector store. So this is how you make retrieval in LangChain. So let's do that now in Llama index. So again, we have to import a vector store. So we use the Chroma vector store again. But in this case, it's a little bit more complex to set this up. So we need a client and we also need to create a collection. So we can call it however we want. I would just call it like this. And then we use the Chroma vector store class and pass in the Chroma collection. So this will create our vector store, but that's not enough in Llama index. You have to create a storage context and you use the storage context class and use the class method from default where you pass in the vector store. So now we've got a storage context and we can now use another class called vector store index, which has got a class method from documents. So it looks very similar to LangChain. We pass in our documents, we pass in the storage context, and we pass in the embedding model. And this will create our final index now. So as you can see here, I pass the documents, but uh, not the nodes to pass nodes. So the chunks, we have to make it a little bit different. We just instantiate it like this, where we pass in the nodes as named argument pass in a storage context and also pass in the embedding model. So 
in my opinion, this is the preferred way to create this index. And again, like in LangChain, we can run the as retriever method to convert our index into a retriever. And now we can run the retrieve method. How long does it take to prepare a pizza? And this will now return the most similar nodes. So we only created two nodes. We only get back the two most relevant nodes from our vector store or our retriever. Okay, the next step in this process is to make an LLM call with the retrieve documents. So we need to create a chain to do so. So let's first go to length chain. And in length chain, there exists two methods to do so. so. So there is a chain interface, which is the legacy interface in LangChain, and there is the new LangChain expression language. This is the preferred way to create a chain. So we will use the preferred way, the LangChain expression language way to create a chain. So the first step is to create a template. This is just a string with variables. So this is a normal rec template where we pass in the context. The context are the documents which were retrieved from the vector store and then we've got the question which also has to be part of the template after that we instantiate our prompt with the from template method where we pass in the string this will create an instance of the chat prompt template we also pass in a chat model which will be gpt 3.5 turbo and this is how we create our chain so in the lang chain expression language you can use the pipe operator to pipe output from the first step of our chain to the second and then to the third and then pipe it to the output parser. So this is actually achieved with operator overloading. So there is a lot of complexity going on inside this little pipes. But as the user of LangChain, you don't really have to care about the implementation of that and you just have to use it. That's why you use a framework. And what's going on here in this chain is that we pass in the question with this item getter, pass it to the retriever. So we make the query to our retriever. So this actually runs get relevant documents. So we store the documents inside the dictionary. So this is the key and this is the value after that. And we do the same for the question, but for the question, we don't do any processing. We only take the question as it is. And the output will be passed to the prompt, which contains here the context variable and the question variable. So after that, we pass the complete prompt to the model and pass the output of the model to the output parser. So this is our chain, which we want to execute or invoke. And now we've got this invoke method where we pass in a dictionary. So we only pass in a single argument. Here you can see this is only question. And the question is how long does it take to prepare a pizza? So this is our complete chain and all of the information will be retrieved from our vector store. So on average, it takes 15 to 20 minutes and if we have a look at the text we should find 15 to 20 minutes here we can see this is the correct answer which was retrieved from our vector store so this is how we do that in length chain now let's have a look at how this works in llama index so again we've got our retriever but in llama index you do that a little bit different as you can see we instantiate an llm like the chat open AI class in length chain but here it's only the open AI class and we use the as query engine method and we pass in the LLM. So this adds a little bit more abstraction on top of our chain. So the LangChain expression language is a little bit more low level. Um, another alternative is to use the settings object. So this is a singleton, which I think is a very nice solution to handle uh, ground truth values inside your application. So you can always know if you use settings, then the LLM, which will be used for example, like this, so we don't have to explicitly pass it. This will always be the attribute of that settings object. I think that's very nice if your application grows uh, bigger, but in this case, we will just comment that out. So we will instantiate OpenAI, convert the index to a query engine, pass a single argument, and then query the query engine. How long does it take to prepare a pizza? So let's run that. And you can see we get the response on average, it takes about 20, uh, 15 to 20 minutes. So this is the correct answer. It works the same way like here. But in LangChain, you have to know a little bit more what's actually going on by constructing that all on your own. Here you've got the single method to do that. So what's the difference here? So in this example, we created a prompt on our own. In Llama Index, we did not have to do that. So what if we want to have a custom prompt? To do that, we can use the query engine and run the get prompts 
method on that. And here you can see this is our prompt. This is of type response synthesizer and we can access it like this. So we can use this syntax here and overwrite our prompt by using that key. But the first step is actually to create a new prompt. So we've used the prompt template class and what we're gonna do here is a little bit different than before because we want to see that we actually overwrite our prompt. So we want that the bot always says, hello, my friend, at the beginning of an answer. Then we've got, again, the context and also the query. And now we create our new prompt template. So this looks very similar to LangChain, but now we want to update our prompt of the query engine uh, with our custom prompt. So this is the key we can access and we run the update prompts method on that. We pass in the key and here we pass in our new prompt. So this will now update the prompt. And if we have a look at our prompt again, we can see that this is now of prompt type custom. So let's run the query engine again. And now we should see a difference in the behavior. Hello, my friend, on average, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah, so that's it. This is how you can perform retrieval with Llama index. So the key takeaways for me are that, in my opinion, both frameworks work pretty similar and are straightforward to use. One key difference is that the default use of Langchain is more low level and higher level in Llama index. Langchain had a high level chain interface, which was ditched because many people were actually fighting the framework to customize prompts, for example. Llama index also provides a lower level API if you want more control. In my opinion, Llama Index seems to be a little bit easier to learn since Langchain is the bigger framework, but if you learn one, you can easily switch from one framework to the other. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you. Bye-bye.